up level with the top of the seats, the bottom of the windows. Well, we get ready and tear off across West Texas. We got out past Matador and all those places, and we're heading toward North Vernon and blazing on down toward Wichita Falls and heading into Dallas. About 10.30, the temperature was already 90 to 92 degrees. Hot, muggy, no air conditioning, and Ed's convertible, of course. And so about 10.30, I said, Ed, why don't we put the top back and let's get some sun? Ed says, great. So we pulled off the side road and put the top back. Well, I decided I'd go first. So I got up on the back of the convertible, took off my shirt, started to sunbathe. I don't know how many of you have ever sunbathed at about 65 miles an hour. <laughs> you begin to have sympathy with anything that was ever cooked on a rotisserie. <laughs> you don't need uh, copper tone, you use barbecue sauce. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it was so hot, so fiercely wind whipped. It was just something, lots of problems. One was that all the heat was just bearing down. Second, in a convertible, your hair always feels like it needs an oil change. <laughs> Whip flashing and zinging you in the face. Third, other cars would pass us going the opposite direction, doing approximately the same speed. They're doing, say, a 65, we're doing 65. They kick up, kick up a little piece of gravel, chip of glass, <laughs> chunk of debris. Now, I can tell you one thing, that kind of stuff loves nothing more than the exposed portion of somebody's body. It will hunt it and find it, just like a homing pigeon. Bing, you got it. And you're going 65, he's going 65, and you've just been smitten with a 130 mile an hour piece of debris. And it'll put a hickey on you. I mean, you just get a bruise. And that's hard to explain to you folks. What happened to you? Well, this 130 mile an hour debris hit me. Sure it did, John. So that was the problem. The fourth problem, and I guess one of the, the worst parts of it for me, I had on a pair of Levi's that had not been washed since September, and this is late May. In fact, you leaned them up against something when you took them off. And I've got my knees doubled up because you don't want to hang your heels in the wheel as you're cruising down the highway. So I'm doubled up on the car trying to get some sun, and the back of my knees are in an absolute rash. Sweat is running in my sweat socks and in my wallet. It's just down my calf and thighs. I'm dying, sweating, miserably, miserably hot. Forty-five minutes was all I could enjoy of that. <laughs> I decided it was time for me to get down, and Elmore decided it was time for him to get up. My best friend, Elmore Averett. Elmore was six feet and a half inch tall, weighed 132 pounds. <laughs> Played football in my high school for the B team. Defensive left end. Should have been a yard marker. <laughs> He'd walk through the locker room just wearing nothing but sweat socks and he looked like a Q-tip bent in the middle. Just That was Elmore. With a helmet, he looked like a chapstick. Number was 11. When he ran, he had a one under each arm. He just, this is Elmore. Sandy Auburn, red hair, freckles, hollow cheeks, 132 pounds. Four pounds of that was Adam's apple. Elmore actually had to wear V-neck dress shirts. It was just <laughs> terrible. Now, Elmore had dressed up so we could see his girlfriend who was at North Texas State. And as we were going across, we were going to deviate on the trip a little and run by so he could have lunch with her. So he had worn a good-looking pair of creased, pleated front, wide belt loop, skinny bottom breeches. Good-looking dress pants. Had on a nice sports shirt, four times rolled up on the sleeves. That used to look good. No cat faces in the collar. And Elmore took his shirt off, folded it neatly, and laid it in the seat, stretched out on the convertible to sunbathe, and started having all the problems I had had. Intense heat, ricocheting debris, hair whiplashing, rash in the back of the knees, sweating the sweat socks. Well, Elmore took about 10 minutes of that and realized that his good pants are going to be messed up by the time we get up to have lunch. So Elmore decided if he's going to sunbathe, he's got to change pants. So he gets up on his knees on the back of the convertible. Now remember, everything piled up in the back seat has you right up level with the tops of the seat. And he gets up on his knees, and there he is in clear sight, blazing across West Texas. Hitchhikers would hide behind litter barrels. I mean, they were just terrified. So Elmore gets up on his knees and shoves me forward. Now convertible, just two doors. You shove the, the seat forward, and I'm hanging on the windshield. 
the wind is just wow, blowing my head off. And I'm hanging on up here. Elmore's holding the seat up with the front of his head and rooting around down here looking for a duffel bag or something where he can find some old khakis, Levi's, or something he could put on to save his good dress pants. Ed was driving the car, about 6'2", 250, healthy fella. And Ed had already taken his shirt off. Now, he had his hair done like a lot of folks did in that day with excess of Vaseline hair oil. Used the wide teeth on the left end of the comb straight back. He could actually turn loose and steer the car with the grooves in his hair. <laughs> it was not blowing, but it also had the hairiest shoulders I have ever seen. And blazing down the highway, here he was with his shoulders blowing in the wind and his hair locked in place. He was wearing mirror sunglasses he could see out and you couldn't see in. Kind of like a fancy suburban church. You couldn't see uh, in. He's got his left arm out the window and back through that little vent and he's steering on the inside of the wheel with this arm up on the seat. <laughs> Elmore is up on the back and he looked like a gopher hunting roots. <laughs> Digging and searching and squirreling around. I'm up here hanging on the windshield. Ed's over here blowing the shoulders in the wind. While I was hanging on the windshield, I discovered in the floorboard a box at Elmore's feet which had in it a number of trinkets from his desk. Uh, a teakwood elephant from India which a missionary had brought his mother and she gave it to Elmore to take to college. Little things like that. Among those things was the lampshade off of Elmore's desk lamp. The sun was killing my eyes. So I took the lampshade and forced it down on my head and if you had been hitchhiking you would have hid behind a litter barrel. It looked like a bunch of Shriners that lost the caravan. I mean, you know, barreling. And I've got this thing look like my tassel blew off. I'm wearing a lampshade. Ed's driving with his hairy shoulders blowing. Elmore's up on the back hunting something to wear. Down in a duffel bag, Elmore turned up a swimsuit. Aha! Pulled it out, pulled the seat back. I caved in. There I sat in my lampshade. Ed was driving with his hairy shoulders and mirror sunglasses. And Elmore got up on his knees and started checking the horizon. And I looked around and said, Elmore, what are you doing? He said, I'm going to take these pants off and put this swimsuit on. I hit Ed on the shoulder. I said, Ed, stop. Elmore wants to change. No, oh, go on, man. Don't stop. Just get there. I said, Elmore, you're out in plain sight. He said, nobody's out there. He's right. It's West Texas. <laughs> if you saw something coming, you had time to knit something before it got there. As far as you could see, there wasn't anything to look at. So, Elmore's checking, and so I started checking with it. So I said, <laughs> it's time. So Ed turned the rearview mirror so he could watch. I turned it at a 45 degree angle so I could watch. I might want to share this with somebody. And when I realized there wasn't anybody behind us, and he realized there wasn't anybody in front of us, I said, hit it! So Elmore unbuckled his belt and shinned out of those good dress pants, folded them quickly, laid them in the seat and grabbed up the swimsuit and stuck his foot in and then discovered a serious problem. It was a jockey swimsuit and he was wearing boxer shorts. No matter how hard he tried to tuck them in, they'd blow back out. He looked like he parachuted in on the back of this car. Flapping down the road, here we came. Six feet and a half inch, 132 pounds with jockey shorts, boxer, boxer shorts blowing in the wind. I was just dying laughing. Well, I looked back and Elmore shin his back out of the swimsuit and started checking the horizon. I said, now what are you doing? So I'm going to take his underwear off and then I'm going to put this swimsuit on. I said, Ed, stop. Elmore said, go on. Nobody's out there. So, he got back up on his knees, and Ed was just concentrating as hard as he could. I checked with him. Nobody was out there. I said, hit it. I turned at a 60-degree angle. Ed put the night dimmer on his mirror. You can hear Elmore giggling at himself, <laughs> you know. 
And I'm watching, boy, and he gets his thumbs